Okay, if we could all take our seats and take a nice deep breath. And first of all, I would like to thank all of you for your patience as we've been trying to get this together for our virtual audience. This is a new technology and a new experience for us doing the live events with this. We've been doing online courses and they work brilliantly. And it is such an incredible um, technology that allows us to connect globally with each other uh, with very little carbon footprint at a very low cost, uh, no travel, and, and really the experience on the online uh, with the online participation is very intimate. You can chat with each other. If people have web cameras hooked up, we can see each other. So it's like being in a room like this together, and um, it, which is really wonderful. We're very excited. My my partner Cody and uh, has and I have been dreaming this work for over 20 years. Um, he birthed the idea for the Prophets Conference and these programs when we were living in our little cabin up 4,000 feet on Haleakala on Maui. And it's been an amazing journey and amazing how it has developed and evolved over all these years. And here we get to come in a room today in Glastonbury with the sun shining on us. And you are here from South Africa, from Australia, from New Zealand, from um, Slovenia, from Latvia, from Belgium, from Spain, from the Netherlands, from France, from all over the UK, the United States, and Canada, and beyond, here live. And it is a, a precious moment to experience. We have had the gift, really, and pleasure of working with so many incredible teachers over the years and that each have a unique message and a unique way of presenting it. And many of them come from scientific perspectives and, and different perspectives. And today we have a really special opportunity to be with someone whose message is so different and so pure and so simple that it touches our hearts in ways that other words don't. She's able to gift us with an awareness that like re we remember something deep in our being. And I know that's why you're all here today. It's why we're here. And we're just really grateful to have Keisha Crowther, little grandmother, with us. So let us warmly welcome Keisha Crowther. Grandmother, welcome to Glastonbury, England. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Am I on? I am on. Thank you. Just here's one. Thank you. This is a tall chair for a little person. <laughs> See if I can stay on this. Thank you all for such a wonderful welcome. And it's really, really, really nice to be here. And I recognize several of your faces. I've seen some of you in different places. And we do have people from all over the world, which is really incredible. There is a little bit of feedback on this mic that is um, coming from this direction. I don't know if we can do anything about that. I've just arrived back from Australia, which was a fantastic trip. We spent three weeks, Debbie and I, with our kids, so that was really nice. We got to take the kids with us and spent a lot of time with the Dolly. Well, we got to spend a lot of time with different Aboriginal elders and got to listen to the Dalai Lama speak. And most of the time, I speak about a certain message, but this one's going to be a little bit different. I want to talk to you a bit about what he had to say. And I found it so incredibly powerful. I teach love wherever I go, and that is the message. And his message was very similar, but also 
to find love through beauty. And I really thought how powerful this was and tried to realize it in my own life and how to really seek beauty in the simple things. He wasn't talking about going out and discovering a whole new life through something magical, but just to realize what magic is happening in your life every single day, at every given moment, from the meal that you eat that Mother Earth gave to you, or the partner that you have to share love with. Um, just the simple things. So I would like to talk a bit about this. How many of you know me from YouTube videos? Just about everyone. It's really incredible. After I was called to this position, I was asked to speak just to a very small crowd, probably 20 people in Santa Fe. And someone happened to record it. And up it went on YouTube. And this is what happened because of it. It's really incredible. The response all over the world, it doesn't matter where I go, people are all the same. And people are all looking for one thing to be love. And that's incredible to me. It's a very simple message. And it is the one thing that can change our lives. Be love. That's all we have to do to change our world, the world that we live in today. And how incredible. It doesn't matter where I go, what kind of people I talk to, we are all seeking that same thing. And it's so easy. Liter literally, our indigenous elders have been teaching us that a day would come on our planet in which Mother Earth would be reborn, that the poles would shift, and some great things would happen. Mother Earth needs to be reborn in order to go into her higher self, her own higher consciousness, her most beautiful state of being. And Mother Earth will go through this shift. It's already begun. The poles are shifting. And it is a promise from our universe, all life that exists out there. The promise is the Mother Earth will go on, no matter what. But the question being asked today is whether humanity will go with her. That is why we're gathered here today. And that is why I teach this message and share what I've been taught. Because for hundreds of years, humanity has been living through the ego and the mind and not the heart. And now we're faced with a real difficult thing. Our planet is shifting. She's going through her pole shift. It's already started. How many of us have heard about the pole's shift? How many of us really understand that it is happening today? It is really happening. The poles are shifting, and they don't stop until they've shifted into their new locations. And it takes about two years to do this. It started last year. And if you look at everything that that tells us, we have about a year and a half to change our consciousness. It is a universal promise that Mother Earth will continue and go forward. The question is whether we will go forward with her or not. That reason being because there is also another universal promise, and that is Mother Earth's children, humanity, will not be allowed to kill their mother. This is a universal promise made to all life. We, her children, will not be allowed to kill her or destroy her. And we have done just about everything to do that. If you take the time to really study and figure out what's actually happening on our planet, it's quite scary. <coughs> do you know that over 90% of all large fish in our oceans are dead? 90%. That's sickening. Do you know that the ozone layer is so far gone, no one is telling you the absolute truth about how devastating it really is? Do you know that the oil spills in our water, none of our science on this planet has a solution of how to clean this. Nowhere on this planet, with all of our technology and all of our science, has one idea of how to clean this up. Our planet is dying. She is suffering and she's gasping for air. And yet, we are promised we will be taken off of her before we kill her. And the poles are shifting today. She will go on. The question is, will we? We have one choice to make and one choice only. We have to start living from love instead of the mind. And this is the only thing 
that will let us survive and continue forward. So how do we do that? How do we be love? How do we change our world? The only thing the indigenous ancestors or the indigenous people who are teaching today and have always taught one special message and that is be love. That is all we are asked to do. That's it. We don't have to go out and do incredible works to change our planet. All we are asked to do is be love. So that is why I'm here today, to help share this message with you. The promise that we can, as humanity, change the world that we live in. Because we are co-creators of our life. We can change this world. Something very important that I want to share with you is I am not here to tell you I have all of the answers. I'm not here because I am better than you, smarter than you, or have more wisdom. I don't. I'm just Keisha. I'm your sister. I'm just like every single one of you. And I have gifts that I can share just like you have gifts that you can share. And I've been very, very fortunate that one of my gifts is being able to talk to Mother Earth. Since I was about eight years old, I've been communicating with her. And she's in a very kind of scary situation right now. She is suffering a great deal. And she loves us. We are her children. How many of us here have a real relationship with our mother? A real relationship where you can say you know her. How many of us have, since childhood have been taught to pray to our Heavenly Father? One person has been taught to pray. <laughs> How many of us have been taught? I was asking how many of us um, have been taught to pray to our Heavenly Father. How many of us have been taught to pray to our mother? It doesn't matter where I go on this planet, when I ask that question, it is always about 1 to 20. And how sad is that? We are never ever taught to communicate with our Heavenly Mother, our Earth Mother. We have two parents. How many of us know who our mother truly is? And I think this is the, I have thought about this time and time again. How is it that human beings could do such tragic things to their mother? How can we cut her trees down and dig way too deep? How can we do all of the things that we do? If I ask you to think about your earth mother, the woman who gave birth to you right now, think about how much you love her how beautiful and divine she is, everything that she's ever given you. Would you rape your mother? Would you throw garbage at her? Would you completely forget that she even exists? Even though she has given you every ounce of life, would you do this to her? I don't think we would. So when it comes down to it, I honestly think that the reason this has happened is we simply forgot she existed. Because if we had a real relationship with our Divine Mother, we would not do the things that we have done. This is why we must remember who she is. We must remember that she exists, that she has a soul and a spirit, and that every breath you have ever taken has come from her. Every meal you have ever eaten comes from her. Every glass of water, Every rainbow, every beautiful creature, it is a gift from your mother. And she is alive. And she loves you. Even though we are killing her, still today she gives everything. Everything. There is no way 
this is a promise, there is no way we can continue as human beings on this planet if we do not remember to love our mother. There are only two things in existence on our planet with the exact same energy. There are only two things that share the exact same frequency, the exact amount of energy. Any guesses on what that is? Mother Earth and the human, human body. We vibrate at exactly, exactly the same. What you do to your mother, you do to yourself and vice versa. If you do not love your mother, how could you possibly love you? And if you don't love yourself, how could you love your mother? What we do to each other, what human beings do to one another, we do to our planet. And what we carelessly do to our planet, we are doing to what each other. If we are being asked to raise our vibration and start to live from love, how is it even possible if we do not know how to live our beloved mother? It's impossible. There are two things that I am teaching that are more important than anything else I will say. And that is we must remember how to love our mother. And we must remember how to love ourselves. And indeed, you are very, very wonderful, very powerful. Right now, energy always has. Energy rules our world. Energy is a very real thing. Energy is in everything. How many energy workers do we have in the room? <laughs> Quite a few. So you know that the strongest energy always wins. It's a given. The strongest energy always wins. This is how you heal others, work with energy. And right now, the energy on our planet, the overruling energy on our planet is ego, power, and mind. But love energy is coming up and up and up. And thank heavens, love energy is 10 times more powerful than hate energy. It doesn't take every human being to live from love to change our world. It takes a good handful of us really living from our hearts. Love energy is much more powerful than hate or mind energy. When you are being love, when you are living from your heart, you really are changing the planet. There is a real frequency on our planet right now of mind energy, of ego, and it is much higher right now than love or it has been much higher. Right now, in the last two years, the love energy has actually almost come to even the scales. And because love energy is 10 times more powerful, the moment it goes, just a hair over, it will flip it completely. Just as all of us today are living in a world of ego and mind, does not mean we are all egotistical, mind, power-hungry people. There are many of us living here today with good hearts. And it is the us that have to change this world and to bring that energy up. Many of us think, how can we change the world? I'm just a stay-at-home mom, or I'm a truck driver. I work at the clinic or the store. You can change the world simply by being on your couch and being love. It's all you have to do. There's no big march to go and join. There's no papers to sign. There's no screaming that needs to be done. Be love. And by being love and being in your heart, whether you're that stay-at-home mom sitting on your couch or sitting at your office, being love changes the world. All things are energy. And right now, love energy is really climbing on our planet. We have about a year and a half to switch ego into love, into the heart. And it is rising. We are doing it. And it's vastly, vastly important. It is the only thing that will keep us moving forward. And it really is the only thing that matters on this planet. If you cannot be love and love yourself, it is a very real possibility we will lose our planet. But there is hope because we exist. 
those of us living from our heart exist. And by simply being love, we give our children a planet to live on. We can stay. Not only do we get to stay, we get to go through the transformation with her. This is something to celebrate. We get to go up in our frequency. We get to step forward in a new era for mankind, one ruled by love. That day is something to celebrate. There are a few very small and simple but vastly important things we can do as human, be human beings to change our world. What do we do with our elderly today? What do we do with them? We throw them away, we put them away. The moment they stop becoming a working part of society, what do we do with our elderly? Do we revere them as we once did? They're the jewels of our family. They have the wisdom that we need. Respect the elderly. Listen to your children. Instead of teaching the children hatred and how to be judgmental, listen to your children. They're the purest little beings on this planet there are. Love the disabled. There is only one group of people on this planet that vibrate higher than any other human being. Those are the mentally disabled. They do vibrate at a much higher level. They have more energy than any other human being. They are incapable of ego. They are incapable of hatred. They are pure beauty and love. The next time you see a disabled person, know that you are looking at an angel on earth. Go out of your way to give them a hug or a smile. How many of you have smiled at a mentally disabled person? Have you seen what one smile will do for them? Just one smile. They are the most profoundly beautiful beings on our planet. And we throw them away. It's so devastating. As long as we continue to do this, we will not move forward as a human beings. As long as we throw away our elderly, we will not move forward as human beings. I am very, very proud to say that I am one child out of five. And I am the only one who is not mentally disabled. I have been raised with angels. And I will continue to live my life trying to live up to them. They are beautiful beings. We need to recognize angels when we see them. If we want to enlighten as human beings and move forward in love, we cannot judge other people. Racism has to go away. If there is any ounce of you who hates or dislikes another human being because of the amount of pigment within their skin, you need to work on yourself. What a tragic thing for human beings over the last many hundred years. How much hatred has happened, real hatred, because of the amount of pigment within someone's flesh? It is absolutely ridiculous. We cannot hate or love one another because of the color of skin. Skin has nothing to do with your soul or who you are. We cannot, we cannot keep acting like this. And we cannot hate another person for who they love. This is one of the greatest tragedies on our planet and something I truly don't understand. Love is the most powerful energy on our planet. 
How can a human being hate another human being for who they love? We cannot act like this and wish to move forward. We must be love, truly be love and love one another. We are each fighting a hard battle. We are each going through very stressful, hard things. We are all trying to move forward. And every single one of us has our own great I am giving us these lessons, placing it before us. We are living the exact journey that our great I am has handed to us. We cannot judge another for their journey. We can love them through it. We can help them through it. We have so much potential to love, to be love. And we really can change our world. I know we can. We are the strongest of the strong. We are the prophesied tribe of many colors. We are it. There's nothing to sign, nothing to pay for. You just are. The tribe of many colors are those who will be living on the planet during the great shift. Those who will open their hearts and love their brothers and sisters and love their mother earth. You were all members of the tribe of many colors. We all are. And we are all equal and divine. And we all can change our planet. Whether you have wisdom keeper for a title, or sister, or brother, or hey you, it doesn't matter. Titles do not matter. What matters is the love we can give each other. I want to take a 10 minute break, go to the bathroom, get a drink, whatever you need to do, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you so much. <laughs>